Here we have the 52 mile per gallon Toyota Corolla Hybrid. Now this is the first generation that Toyota has offered the Corolla as a hybrid in the United States for 2020 and 2021. This 2021 model has gotten me even better miles per gallon than it predicts. Today we're going to take a quick look at everything on the outside, the inside, and take it for a test drive. Let's get started. There's one thing to note right off the bat. The Corolla Hybrid is only available in a sedan, no hatchback, and it's only available in the LE trim level, which is a low trim level. At least at the time of this video in 2021, if you want to see the XSE sedan or the SE hatchback, I've got a review on both of those. Check in the description below. Now let's start things off under the hood because this is kind of where the magic happens on this Corolla Hybrid. So there's just one option for the hybrids and I'm happy with what Toyota has given us with one small exception that I'll tell you at the end. But right here we get a 1.8 liter gas engine that's paired with two electric motors and that's gonna give you a combined horsepower rating of 121 horsepower. Now that's significantly less than the upper trim level Corollas with 160 plus horsepower. But the smooth powertrain in here, it's really not too bad. We'll talk more about that in the test drive. With the hybrid system, it goes with its electronically controlled CVT transmission that's hardly noticeable, as we'll talk about in the test drive. And I think my favorite thing about this is that Toyota is still using their nickel metal hydride battery that they have proven to be successful in hot climates, cold climates, and be durable long term. And the way they positioned it is under the back seat, so it helps to lower the center of gravity of the car, essentially giving it a little bit better handling and not taking away any extra cargo space. Now miles per gallon, this is the kicker. This Corolla Hybrid can get 53 miles per gallon in the city, 52 on the highway, and it's rated at 52 miles per gallon combined. Now in my highway drive test that I do on every vehicle, highway is not ideal for hybrids because you don't get to brake and recharge the battery quite as much. But in my highway drive, I got 63 miles per gallon without trying and without being in eco mode. The same way I do it with every vehicle, 63 miles per gallon, that's awesome. Now, some of you may be worried that hybrids are expensive to maintain or that they're not reliable or durable, but Toyota has been building these hybrids for a long time and there's a lot of old ones on the road. And Toyota gives you the hybrid system, an eight year, 100,000 mile power, 100,000 mile warranty, but the hybrid battery itself, which is the biggest kicker to replace if it ever fails, gets a 10 year, 150,000 mile warranty. And I would say my only complaint is that Toyota does not offer this powertrain with a plug-in option like the Prime Prius or the Prime RAV4 to where you can get a certain amount of power just electric, but this is still very efficient. A quick look at the exterior, Toyota gives you a little bit more of an aggressive front end than you might expect in a hybrid. This black mesh grille is similar to what you get on the SE and XSE sportier models and you still get LED high and low beams that do a decent job and they look pretty cool at night with these little swoops in them. So definitely a, a nice look from Toyota. And one way you can tell if a Toyota is a hybrid up front is this blue Toyota emblem. Well, the Toyota emblem will have a blue lining to it. This paint color is called Blizzard Pearl Paint. It's a very nice white paint with a really metallic-y sheen to it and some flakes in it. It looks good on all these different Toyotas that they use it on. Right here is one difference compared to the regular Corollas. These get 15 inch wheels that have hubcaps on them and you've got low rolling resistance tires to give you the best efficiency as possible. The smaller wheels help with efficiency and we have the regenerative brakes which help to capture electrical energy and help charge that battery. And Toyota gives us optional blind spot monitoring in these mirrors, otherwise they're just your basic mirrors. And in the back, Toyota actually gives you a multi-link independent rear suspension that is ideal for ride and handling. And then as we look at the back of the Corolla, you do get some partial LED taillights. I'll show you Toyota smart key in a little bit, but with that smart key, there's a little touchpad right under here where you can open the trunk without having to use your key fob or inside. And back here, Toyota gives you about 13 cubic feet. It's not a big trunk, it is on the smaller side, but this hybrid model doesn't sacrifice trunk space compared to the non-hybrid models because of the position of the battery. And those seats can fold down a 40-60 split, which is nice. 
Now Toyota gives you a tire inflator kit back here, but there is no spare tire, which to me is disappointing. But if you take this foam tray out, there is room to put a spare tire if you wanted to. Now hopping into the front seats of the Corolla, it is a pretty low vehicle. So if you have mobility issues, you'll have to try it out for yourself. But these seats are actually premium fabric. It's supposed to be a nicer fabric than you'll see in the base Corolla non-hybrid model. The thing about this Corolla is that it is all manual adjustment, the seat moving forward and backwards, reclining, and you can adjust the height on this driver's seat. The seats are fairly comfortable though. I really haven't had too much to complain about. The, the cushion is fairly soft. There's some decent bolstering in here, so not much to complain about that. However, there's no heated seats available. There's no power seats available, even if you wanted those, except Canada, my friends to the north, you guys can get heated seats and you can get power soft tech seats and you can even get a heated leather wrapped steering wheel, which we don't get in the US. In fact, the heated seats are standard in Canada. And I'm five foot nine and I feel just fine in here. It doesn't feel too crammed. This center console does jut out a little bit, but headroom is quite good for this small of a vehicle. Now starting right off on the inside, first of all, Toyota does give you the smart key even on the LE hybrid here. So this also does have remote start, but the vehicle shuts off as soon as you open the door, but smart key on the front door here, which is nice. With that, you get push button start, push that. And then with the hybrid, one thing you'll notice is that the vehicle doesn't usually start the engine. It will say ready. You see the green ready right there. That means the vehicle is on and you see that little EV icon. That means we're in EV mode and the engine is not running. Now to take a look at the rest of the interior, there is a little change here, actually a big change for some people that I'll cover in just a little bit, but it has an in your face dash. That dash really sticks out, but Toyota did put nice material on there and up above. So it's definitely a nicer feeling interior compared to previous Corollas. Now moving over to the door, Toyota gives you just a hard plastic up here, but this is an inexpensive car, so that's excusable. A cloth armrest, which has a little bit of padding. And then the bottle holder here is pretty small. This is a big bottle, but mine does not fit. And there's a little storage bin and a pretty big grab handle. Toyota steering wheel is comfortable to hold on to. There's no leather wrapped steering wheel, at least on our vehicle. But like I said, Canada, you can get one that is also heated. Um, but Toyota's newest steering wheel design where you have the kind of the simplified controls on the left and the right, there's no more cruise control stock. And then as we look at the gauges up here, you've got a physical RPM gauge over there, then your fuel gauge, temperature gauge over here. This middle stuff can be changed. The display can be customized, but check that out. 54, almost 55 miles per gallon in my time of driving this so far and there's a good amount of information that you can cycle through on here. It's kind of fun. You can even see where the power is going from the battery to the engine, etc. there and customize all of your safety settings here. And if you hold that, you can even change the way that this meter looks. So I have it digital. You can make it look more analog. It's still digital, but you can change the way that looks if you want to. Then right over here is where one of the big changes is. So. With the 2020 Corollas, they did not have Android Auto. They had Apple CarPlay, but no Android Auto. You now get Android Auto on here. So Android, Android users, that is awesome for you guys. This is the home screen. You can customize your home screen in which piece of information goes where. So this is just how it was when I got it, and I think it works just fine. Um, that is the home button. Menu is where you go to change some settings. And Toyota's Entune system, is not great, but it works just fine. There's decent customizable settings on here. You can fast forward and, and uh, rewind your Sirius XM, um, but it just has basic audio. It's just a basic six speaker system, nothing special in the Corolla hybrid. But I do like the fact that they have these physical buttons on each side, a volume and a tuning knob, even though this volume knob is so small, if I use my right hand to go do it, sometimes I bump the screen, but just clumsy me. Even though this is technically an LE trim, we still get automatic climate control. Now, I believe the Corolla hatchback can give you dual zone climate, but that's not hybrid. So you do have automatic climate for single zone and easy to use controls here. And if you see this eco heat and cool button, if you put the car in eco mode, it's gonna automatically select that, but you can do that on your own and the vehicle will be more efficient using your heat and AC to get better miles per gallon. 
And then just below that, there's a little storage bin right there. That is basically the only open storage bin right here, but it is welcome. Um, Canada, I believe, gets a wireless charging mat right there. I'm pretty sure that's where it goes, but that's an optional feature in Canada. And you guys even get ambient lighting, which I have not seen in the Corolla, but there's no ambient lighting in the US models, but that's optional for Canada. So we put it in reverse. You just get a basic backup camera. The lines do not move and it is a little bit fuzzy. It looks kind of like Toyota's older camera, uh, but you do get rear cross traffic alert optional with this model, which includes blind spot monitoring in your mirrors. Right in front of the shifter, you've got your drive modes for a sport mode, a normal and an eco, and then EV mode, which we'll go through in the test drive. We'll go through all these test drive modes uh, a little bit later. Electronic parking brake and a brake hold button. And these cup holders are pretty small and just fixed in size. It works, I can put mine in there, but it doesn't go all the way down. But one nice thing is that this armrest can slide forward. So it gives you a little bit more reach for your arm on the steering wheel if you wanna rest it there. Otherwise, if we take a look inside, first of all, you have a soft material, kind of a cloth material on here, but not too much padding. Then you have a USB 12 volt power outlet and a little storage bin. And the USB to, to uh, plug in for Android Auto or Apple CarPlay is actually below the dash right up there. Toyota keeps it simple with a manual flip uh, dimming mirror, regular lights up above, and no moonroof or sunroof in this hybrid model. And visibility wise, it is pretty good. This car is not too sharply shaped. So for sedan purposes, it actually is pretty good visibility overall. Now taking a look at the back seat, these doors don't open up terribly wide, but it is not too bad getting a car seat in here, even though it is a small and tight back seat. Then sitting behind myself at five foot nine, I've got pretty decent knee space actually for this class of a car. And my foot space really isn't too bad either. There are no air vents back here, which is the norm for this type of a vehicle, this size of a vehicle, but there's a little storage bin. No plugins back here, but you do have a couple in that center console that you could wire to the back seat. Toyota gives us a fold down armrest in this trim, does have some padding and room for cup holders. And as far as headroom, as you can see, my hair is touching the roof, but my head is not pushing into the roof. So most adults, my height or less, will be able to fit back here. All right, y'all, we're just getting going on this test drive. And first of all, when you turn the car on, as you saw earlier, it's just quiet. It'll say ready if the car is on. But I'm gonna go ahead and put it in drive and I have it in EV mode. So the car will do everything it can to stay under just battery power and the electric motors. And it only does it up to a certain speed, but in parking lots, low speeds, you know, in certain situations, you could do that. And for example, I just got up past the speed threshold. I believe it's mid 20 something miles per hour and then it'll shut off. But the car will put itself in EV mode under certain situations when it doesn't need the engine. Like right now, it's in EV mode on its own. So I'm just gonna put it in normal mode now to start with and it'll change between normal uh, with gas and battery or just battery. And you can see all that happening on the main display or down here, uh, you can scroll through the options and see when you're getting certain power from what. But in this test drive, I'm gonna go over what it's like to daily drive this Corolla Hybrid how it compares to the gas model and uh, what the comfort is like, the handling and all of that driving characteristics. So coming to a stop in a hybrid is different than it is in a gas model because the hybrid models have regenerative brakes that help capture electrical energy from your movement. So you have a certain portion that's not real braking um, like the brake pads, but then you get to the point of where you use the brake pads and there can be a little bit of a jerk or a transition between those two, but it's actually really good in this Corolla hybrid to where it's hardly noticeable. And it has a, an electronically CVT, electronic CVT to where if I accelerate, You just kind of get a, a constant drone, similar to a regular belt and pulley CVT, but it's mostly unnoticeable and completely out of the way, which is the way it should be in this car. And right now we're still in normal mode, but the car is actually in EV mode using zero gas because we're just kind of coasting along. It doesn't really need the engine power 
to be moving right now. And handling in here, the steering feel is good. It's it's uh, this Corolla. I've got to tell you, is far improved in terms of driving dynamics compared to the last generation Corolla, and that's with the gas model too. I think the ride comfort is better, the steering feel is better, the handling is definitely better. It's just a nicer and better driving Corolla than you've ever seen. The one thing is that the power in this car is definitely lacking, but um, I'll put it in sport mode in a little bit so you can kind of see how that goes. In fact, right now we are still in EV. The car is in EV, but if I get on the gas, then it turns the gas engine on and you can hear that. I get off the gas and it goes right back to EV. So if you kind of watch and learn and learn your behaviors and learn when the car is just in EV mode um, and pay attention to those things, you can get really good miles per gallon. And in my test drive, my highway MPG test, I put every car in cruise control, the same speed, same part of the same road. Uh, and this did really well without me even trying. Now I just put it in power mode, which is like sport mode, and you'll get the most battery power and gas power when you get on it. So let's do pedal down. And there was 60, and obviously we were rolling, but yikers. This thing, it's pretty slow. My main complaint with that is that passing power on highways is a little bit scary sometimes. Um, but you see right here, this feels really good going around these corners. So if you're going to be in some windy roads, carvy mountains, and in areas that, you know, you'd want to feel confident with handling, the Corolla's got you covered. Pedal down in power mode one more time. And it responds quickly. That's the biggest benefit, but it's pretty darn slow. And then, um opposite to that we have eco mode to where the car is going to do its best to be as efficient as possible use more battery power use less engine power and put the climate control in eco mode like i showed you earlier the car still handles well it's got a nice soft ride i think part of that is that we have 15 inch wheels so there's larger tires or larger amount of rubber higher profile wheels and uh it soaks up the bumps really well. Now this does have Toyota Safety Sense 2.5, 2.5. So it actually has the lane keeping system, lane centering, which will keep you centered in your lane, which I don't have it turned on right now. But it does a pretty good job. It kind of bounces you back and forth and it's a little more active than I would like. Uh, but I have a demonstration video of how all that works if you wanna check that out in the description below. Now in terms of daily driving the Corolla, I thoroughly enjoy it. It's almost like a challenge of getting behind the wheel and being efficient. I haven't been trying to be overly efficient with this, but it's really fun to pay attention to. We're in EV mode right now. And then as I'm braking, it's recapturing energy. So you'll have more battery power for when you take off after this. The screen, even though the style is controversial with a lot of people, it's practical. I mean, it's right there, it's in line of sight, it's easy to touch and all of that. Now one complaint is that, as you'll notice on this road, there's more road noise than I would want, but in this class of a car, it is what it is. It's just how it goes. However, compared to the regular gas sedan model, this registered quieter scores on the highway right here on the rough road and on an interstate at higher speeds. Day to day, I wish the storage was a little bit better right here. It's basically just a little basket right there that just, it's just kind of annoying. You can only really put one thing there. Um, this is small, cup holders don't fit every drink. Uh, but overall, I mean, the Corolla is still pretty easy to live with. Good value for the price, excellent efficiency, and still kind of fun to drive And the fact that it handles well. And it's almost a game trying to get the best MPG as possible and I can guarantee well I can't guarantee for you but if you practice and if you learn the best ways to get efficient driving with these hybrids you will definitely be able to beat the EPA estimates but let's go ahead and wrap things up on this Corolla 
So to wrap things up, on this 2021 Toyota Corolla Hybrid, I think Toyota did a really nice job of offering a good value, practical, everyday vehicle with excellent miles per gallon. If you're not ready to make the jump to a full electric vehicle, this hybrid is a great option. I wish that they offered it as a plug-in hybrid, and I wish that Toyota really would give us more trim levels or offer it with a hatchback. I wish that they would have. I mean, they've had a couple years to do that, but we haven't done that yet. All in all, Toyota's done a superb job of offering a great value, efficient, everyday car. Leave your thoughts down below on what you think, and if you wanna see the other trim levels, be sure to look in the description below for those other videos. Subscribe for weekly reviews. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.